Hi everyone and welcome back to my bench. Today we are on a quest for finding a better hardware to run Home Assistant on and in front of you is the Dusun DSGW210 Home Assistant Gateway. It's an interesting piece of tech that I was given for free from Dusun to check and review and to be honest this is the second time that I'm making this video because I ran into a lot of problems and I had to stop in between the review to try and figure it out but let's start from the beginning and I'll tell you what this is what it can do and if it's any good to you to be used to run home assistant on now from its box this little device seems to be promising quite a lot it's named as edge computer gateway and it's made by a company called Dusun that seems to be specializing in IoT equipment and at least on the box it says that it comes with Wi-Fi connectivity, 4G LTE, Bluetooth 5.2, Zigbee 3.0, Z-Wave, LoRaWAN and a lithium ion battery uh, to serve as a backup but as I found out that doesn't seem to be quite right at least not for the model that I've got and they seem to be packaging all of the versions in the same box so mine for example does not have the LoRaWAN module uh, this one is the DSGW210 HAF1 version so it doesn't come with built-in LoRaWAN but it does have the slot inside if we want to install the module ourselves and additionally on the Bluetooth version the module seems to be present but for the life of me, I was unable to make it work for me unknown reasons. I tried contacting Dusun, but unfortunately I didn't got any response. And also uh, there is a bit of a quirk with the Wi-Fi connectivity because you are unable to connect the gateway through Wi-Fi. It can only provide its own Wi-Fi for you to add devices on. That it's a bit questionable. I'm not sure if I would have made it that way because sometimes maybe it's a good thing to have it connected uh, through wi-fi on your local network and then also you can make it to emit its own wi-fi to connect the sensors to on the side of the box we have the specs of this particular version so it's powered by the rk3328 quad core cortex a53 processor which if i'm not mistaken is the same as on the raspberry pi 3 it has 2 gigabytes of ram and 32 gigabytes of onboard storage it's running Linux Debian 11 and within the box it comes with a USB Type-C 5 volt 3 amp uh, power adapter that I'm using to power it on. You can upgrade the storage up to 128 gigabytes. It has a micro SIM card slot for a 4G SIM card so it can serve as a backup if your Ethernet connection runs out. And it has a lithium battery of uh, claimed 6000 milliamp hours capacity which all in all seems uh, fairly okay. On the other side, it has a rundown of the functionality. So uh, Wi-Fi and maybe it hints here. So it says provide stable Wi-Fi connection. So it's only providing Wi-Fi connection. It cannot be connected uh, through Wi-Fi on your network. It has Zigbee, uh, lithium battery and all the rest of the stuff except for LoRa, which in my case, that uh, module is not present. Now, what I really like about the gateway when I initially got it is this uh, mounting bracket that comes with it that you can use to hook it from the back. So you can install this on a wall or on the ceiling because it looks as if it's made to be hanged from the ceiling. So this bracket does serve a nice purpose. But I think that the good things kind of stop there because immediately after powering it on, I had issues trying to figure out how to access it, even though their manual and everything uh, and all the documentation online says that you just power your Ethernet cable and power it on and you should be good to go. At the first run, it took around 10 to 15 minutes until it probably went through all of the updating processes until I had Home Assistant ready and that was not mentioned anywhere in the manual so i was wondering what's re what's happening what's really going on and i only figure out that it's in a kind of starting process when i entered through ssh into it and figure out that it's still starting the docker processes internally this uses docker to run a home assistant which 
I don't know if it's the right choice, but it is what it is. And once it was ready, I was greeted by the Home Assistant UI. I was asked to create an account and set it up for the first use, which I did. And I was greeted to a basic Home Assistant installation. So I proceeded to install the required integrations, two of which are the Zigbee Home Automation and the Z-Wave, both of which installed without any issues. I do have a Zigbee device that we're gonna try and connect to the gateway, but as you can see here in the corner, I tried to uh, set up Bluetooth. Unfortunately, I didn't succeed. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I tried to follow all of their guides and nothing seems to work. And it's kind of stuck in a initializing loop. So it starts to initialize and then it fails. So if you have any idea what I'm doing wrong and how to correct this, then be sure to let me know down in the comments. And you can see here that it leaves together with my other home assistant setup that I currently have running on a Think Center mini PC, which to be honest, cost basically a bit less than what this cost if you buy it brand new. So, that's that. I think I prefer that hardware over this one because it has eight gigabytes of RAM and a lot of storage and a much faster processor than what this has. Now the gateway does come with the battery as it states. So if we unplug the power cord, we'll see that it still stays on. And I had this running since the morning, running only on battery live and it was running perfectly fine now it's 8 in the afternoon and the gateway was still running when i came back so you can have multiple hours of backup with that battery but unfortunately another quirk of the gateway that i found that i think it's a bit of weird issue that is that you cannot really turn it off there is a power button here that no matter how many times i try to press it or just hold it for a few seconds it doesn't seem to be doing anything other than if you hold it for 10 seconds it's gonna completely reset the gateway to its factory settings so anything that you added to home assistant will be gone so all of the integration all of the devices everything is deleted through that one button that's easily accessible on the site so i'm not really sure what they thought and how they thought to operate that but i personally don't like it at all my cable is a bit loose here so you saw it earlier flashing that means that it lost connectivity and it's now back on now let's try to see if the zigbee automation will work this is the first time that i'm trying this so bear with me and to test it out i have these obs i don't know how that's red power socket that's zigbee 3.0 so we'll see if we can figure out how to bind it with the gateway. I'm gonna plug it here. Okay, and that seems to be working and clicking. Now let's go within the Home, ass uh, home Assistant, within the Zigbee integration and try to figure out and add a device. Okay, searching for Zigbee devices. Okay, and it seems that we figured it out. I'll change the name to socket and I'll ignore the area. Let's say it's in the living room. Let's see now within devices. Yeah, we have two devices here and let's figure out what those devices are. And this is the socket. Let's see if we can control it. And yes, I don't know how much you can hear that, but or even see that, but it's clicking when I'm connecting it and it seems to be able to do some power metering. So let me find something that we can power on. So here is a light that's being powered by the switch. And if I press the button, the light turns on and we can see within Home Assistant that we also get the switch position on and the current power measured as being uh, two watt. 
and we can also turn the light off from within home assistant so that means that zigbee works and it's able to communicate with devices and control them what i do like about the gateway is this light circle on the top which i think uh, looks really nice and it does different things depending on the operation of the gateway which for its normal operation is this uh, blue color and i don't think that you are able to change those those are just things that they pre-programmed in it maybe updating the firmware or the linux version might do a trick but if we unplug the network cable you'll see that the light now starts to pulsate uh, i think it's best if i turn off the additional lights that i have so you could better see that so now the lights seem to be flickering it's going uh, dimmer and then brighter meaning that it lost the uh, ethernet connectivity if we return the cable back then it should come back on with the uh, constant uh, blue light yeah that seems to did the trick and if we reset it with the reset button i'm using the sim tool to press the reset button you'll see that it goes red this is the mode where it's starting once it started and boot up then it should transition to the blue circle as we had before it might take a while to do so because it's gonna need to start all of the docker containers and everything and even though that we see the blue light here we if we go here on the browser and refresh the page we'll see that it's not yet available and while the initial investigation i found this as well which is running on a different port than is uh, home assistant home assistant is on 8123 but this one is running on port 4357 and it's a some sort of a observer for home assistant to see what the current state of it is and it kind of adds some glimpse of the logs as well so if we refresh this we can figure out where the gateway is in terms of starting now it's currently processing this will take a few minutes until we have it fully operational and until then we are not getting any response from home assistant so let's wait a bit until it connects and after we got the healthy indication from the observer we can see that we can now access home assistant even though things are still starting in but the biggest downside of the buttons on the side that i found is the reset thing that i was talking about earlier so let me zoom out a bit if i go in and start pressing the power button in an attempt to turn it off and hold it there for i think it was 10 seconds then we're gonna completely nuke and now it's flashing green meaning that it's going through its reset process and let's see now after a couple of minutes until everything starts up once again let's see what's the state of the home assistant within so now after a few minutes after it boot up it welcomes you to a completely fresh installation of home assistant that tells you to create your home let's create the user okay let's set the country as well and it's gonna greet us with a completely blank new installation with all of our work that we have done basically gone i mean i i don't know what the idea is with the button and being so easily able to reset the whole thing you'll see bluetooth is still not running out of the box we don't have the zigbee integration we don't have the z-wave integration basically everything is just back to how it was from the factory and with all of that what's the final verdict uh well this is uh, kind of like a nice build it feels premium it's made of nice material and they've put quite a lot of effort in making sure that it's handy and usable but 
I don't think that it's there yet. Maybe with few additions and better support and better out of the box experience, not being reset so easily, maybe this can be a thing that you can substitute and run Home Assistant easily in your home without too much hassle, without uh, figuring out Raspberry Pis or setting up uh, uh, Proxmox or virtualization or anything, just plug and play solution, but it still needs work to be there. And with the price point similar to kits like Home Assistant Yellow, I don't think that it's worth it. I mean, it's maybe for someone, uh, but at least not for me. Right now, I'm gonna use this gateway as a testing bed for my integrations and things that I want to try out with Home Assistant without disturbing my regular setup too much. And if you have any ideas, if you have anything that we uh, that you want me to try on the gateway and figure out or let you know, then be sure to ask them down in the video comments. I'll be happy to make a follow-up video if there is a ever need to do so. So if you think that you like this video, make sure to subscribe, make sure to hit the notification bell to get notified when I publish new videos. And uh, the algorithm thinks that you're gonna like this one over here. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers!